Hello there, continuing with the tutorial series, now I want to show you how to make a character. We're going to be illustrating this chef character that you're seeing here on the screen from the ground up, entirely in ink shape, using only keyboard and mouse, no pen tablet or sketch whatsoever. And we are going to do that in real time and step by step. I'm going to assume you're a complete beginner to ink shape and illustration in general, and that you will follow along drawing with me. If this video seems interesting to you, but you aren't familiar with Inkshape, I'll let you know that I have a video that goes pretty in-depth into the program and the basics of vector illustration. I'll leave you a link in the description. But before starting, I would like to remind you that this video is part of a series of real-time step-by-step tutorials aimed at Inkshape beginners. If you're interested, check out the description for the playlist. And of course, subscribe for weekly tutorials like this one. So let me know what you think. Feedback is always appreciated. Ok, let's begin. First, let's set up a couple of things in the document. First, I'll be using a grid, not to snap to, but rather so it's easier to copy my shapes and proportions. This is for those who want to replicate my drawing as accurately as possible. So go to File, Document Properties. In the Grids tab, select the option that says Rectangular Grid and hit new. The size is a bit too small to be useful to us, so in the spacing X and Y set the value to 20. And one last change, click on the button right next to the label that says Measure Grid Line Color, and move the alpha slider to about 50, so it's a bit more noticeable. The second thing to set up is the option that's related to the way we are going to draw shapes. Go to Edit, Preferences. In the Tools section, go to the Node tool, and here make sure this option that says Deleting Nodes Preserve Shapes is enabled. I'll be making use of a couple of techniques that will need this option enabled. Ok, so we are ready to start drawing, and the very first step is to build the base drawing, often called the mannequin. You rarely are going to make a character just by drawing it in one go. You need to plan the main shapes and proportions with a quick drawing and then use that base for the final deal. So let's do that now. Select the Node tool, and here I'm going to draw a shape, and I want it to be as accurate as possible with the form it takes. It is three big squares tall, on the top is about one, on the bottom is about one and a half, and on the right side it has this corner in the middle point. Select the right node with the Node tool, and click on this button to transform it to a smooth node. Now delete it using the delete key. Remember the option we enabled a minute ago? Well, thanks to that option, the curvature here will be maintained once we delete the node. By default, it just flattens down. That's one quick way I like to make a curve section. To first draw it using straight lines, and then smooth them. I feel it helps at the moment of editing the shape, and we'll be using this method all throughout the rest of the drawing. Continuing with the shape, select the two nodes at the right and move them about one small square up. Now here comes another technique we'll be using through the rest of the video. If you hold shift and drag from a corner node, you'll drag out a handle. This is very useful to introduce a small curvature to a straight line, while maintaining the shape of the path as much as possible. So holding shift, drag from the left nodes and give them this S shape. Let's define the head now. Make a curved section about one big square from the top. We want to make a chef, and a chef without a chef hat is not a real chef. So to the side, so it's easier to work on, make this shape with a pen tool. Because this is a hat, and we may change its shape later on, it is not as important to be super accurate, but still you have the grid, so it should be easier to copy my exact shape if you want. And here at the bottom make a slightly bigger rectangle. This is the fold of the hat and it should leave the silhouette a bit. When you're done, move it to the top of the head. You're gonna have to rotate it so it follows the tilt. For the legs, I want him to have them bent. Just make this L shape with a rectangle in the bottom. 
Together they should be about one big square height, and should be also thinner at the top and wider at the bottom. Of course the rectangle in the bottom is the feet. For the arms, his right arm is gonna be extended and holding some object. Make this trapezoidal shape of about one big square width. And a rectangle in the end of the hand. Watch out for the proportions. For his left arm, just repeat the same steps, only this time he's gonna be holding a meat cleaver. And the base is done. Double check the proportions with the grid before moving on. We are gonna be using this base to build the rest of the character. Also, from now on the proportions are gonna be less important. So you should rely more on eyeballing what looks good. Because characters are always gonna be more complex than anything else, a copy will always be slightly different no matter how accurate you try to be. Embrace the difference and try to make what you get great on its own. Okay, we're ready to start to make the final character using the base as a guide. And I always like to start with the face. First of all, select the body shape and give it this color from the palette. I found that this swatch works pretty good as a skin color. Now grab the ellipse tool and make an ellipse. Give it this white, the third swatch from the gray palette, counting from the right. I think full white doesn't always look great, so this white that is not as strong works as a pretty good substitute. Duplicate it to the other side with Ctrl D. Using the object tool, rotate them and scale them so they look uneven. Remember that we are going for a crazy guy. Now to make the lower lid, grab the pen tool and draw a shape over the bottom, leaving the silhouette of the eye. Sample the color of the skin. And now let's clip it inside the eye. Duplicate the shape with Ctrl D, and without moving anything, select both shapes using Shift, and then left click, and set clip. Now the lid shape is clipped to the eye shape, but notice how, because the lid shape is on top, it obscures a bit the eye outline. It's a small detail, but it's noticeable. So to fix that, duplicate the eye shape with Ctrl D, and remove the fill by clicking on the X swatch in the palette. Now let's add the iris. With the ellipse tool, make a small ellipse, give it full black as a fill. While I found that full white doesn't always look great, in this type of drawing, full black often makes things pop up more, so we'll be using it in many places. And to finish the eye, I don't like how it is completely closed. I think a small opening in the bottom will make it look more integrated into the head. This is easy to do. Just grab the pen tool and make a small rectangle that covers up the black outline. Sample from the color of the skin and of course remove the stroke by clicking on the X swatch while holding shift to apply it to the stroke instead. When you're done, select all the shapes from the eye with the object tool and hit Ctrl G to group it. Let's move to the other eye. We will repeat the same steps than before, but with slightly different proportions and locations. Make the eyelid, this time a bit higher up to make the expression look even crazier. Clip it inside by duplicating the eye shape, shift select both shapes, left click and set clip. Now duplicate the eye shape and remove the fill. Make the connection between the eye and the head. Sample the color of the skin and remove the stroke. Make the iris with the ellipse tool and give it the same black color. And this time, I want the eyelid to obscure a portion of the iris. So we need to move it below. With the iris selected, click on this button to lower its position in the stack. To be below the eyelid. Changing the order of the objects is one of the most common actions we'll be doing. So from now on, I won't be going to this button. I'll be using these shortcuts. I'll let you know when I'm using them. 
Ok, now we can group the shapes of the eye with Ctrl G. Moving on to the nose, this is going to be easy. With the pen tool, make a straight line. Switch to the node tool and make an arch. Adjust the handles to make the arch nicer looking. Now with the ellipse tool, make two small ellipses. And rotate them and scale them so they look different. Group the shapes if you want. But here's the thing, if you want to overlap this shape to the other eye, like I do, you'll need for the arch of the nose to have a fill. So select the arch and sample the color from the skin. Now it should obscure the eye correctly. The eyebrows should be easy as well. With the pen tool make two big, thick rectangles on top of the eyes. Don't make a perfect rectangle, give it a subtle trapezoidal shape. Ok, but now they are too geometrical. Let's round them off a bit. The easiest way is to use the technique I showed you a minute ago when making the body, of dragging out the handles out of the corner nodes. Just hold shift with the node tool and drag out both handles out of each corner in diagonal. This should smooth the corners. Remember to be subtle, you don't want them completely rounded off. Now for the mouth. With the pen tool, make a triangular shape and just like with the eyebrows, pull the handles out of the corner node to give it the roundness at the bottom. Give it this color. We need some teeth, otherwise the mouth will look weird. Just make this rectangular shape with the pen tool and sample the white. The tongue is gonna be a half circle made with the pen tool. Here I didn't even bother to clip it inside, I just made the corner match the shape of the mouth. Give it this red color. I forgot to separate the teeth, so with the pen tool make three lines and don't make them straight make them a bit crooked. Group the mouth shapes. One important detail here, a chin made out of a single line, like the nose but upside down. Ok, now for the most important part of any self-respecting chef, the moustache. With the pen tool, make this shape. Take note of the position of the nodes, and the way they make this wave on top and how it's flat on the bottom. Smooth these three nodes by transforming the node to smooth type with the smooth node button. Duplicate it to the other side. Group it together and adjust its position and scale so it looks good on the head. For the second most important part of any self-respecting chef, the hat, select the two shapes and sample the white. Use the node tool to give it a curve to the folds of the hat. Select these four top nodes and hit the smooth button. Adjust the shape so it looks to your liking. And a final detail to the hat, usually this type of hat overlaps a bit, so to simulate these shapes overlapping, tap the pen tool and make a short line here at this section. Now I realized that I completely forgot the ears, because this character is more or less in three quarters, we're gonna draw a single one, grab the pen tool and make a small rectangle. 
sample the color from the skin, select these two nodes and make them smooth. Now with the pen tool draw a small C inside, and here you should probably leave it in front of the head, but I don't know why I moved it behind. I never end up catching this mistake, but it doesn't matter, it won't break the illustration. And we are done with the head. Remember, this copy you are doing will be about a lot of eyeballing what looks good. So spend some time moving, scaling and rotating the groups that makes up the features, so they look to your liking. For the body we want the classic chef outfit of course, and a nice little detail to add here is some folds in the clothes here at the bottom where the legs are. So grab the pen tool and place a node a bit above the corner by double clicking on the line. We want to put a node here so when we pull the corner with the node tool, the node maintains the rest of the line into the same position. Repeat the same steps with the other side. The bottom edge should arch a bit down, so do that with the node tool. Ok, so now for the actual clothes. With the pen tool, create a shape that covers up the rest of the body from the separation we made of the head. Now to clip it inside, duplicate the body shape with Ctrl D, select both shapes, left click and set clip. Now sample the white color. The chef outfit usually has this red scarf thing around the neck, so let's do that. With the pen tool draw these trapezoidal shapes. Notice the curvature at the sides, and notice that because the character is in a more or less 3 quarters view, the center point is going to be a bit to the right, not in the exact center, so the left side is going to be longer. Round the edges with the node tool. Give it this red color. A nice detail for this type of wrapping clothes is to show the back side as it wraps back. So with the pen tool, draw this shape closing off the gap at the top. Give it this color and move it behind everything. Draw the shape on the other side and again move it behind. This shape is supposed to be clothes, so let's give it some quick folds. With the node tool, add three nodes on the line. Move the middle node a bit to the inside and the other two nodes a bit outside. Repeat the same steps for the other side. Now for the bow tie, with the pen tool, draw a rectangle in the middle of the two shapes. Use the technique of dragging the nodes out to round it off. To make it look even more like a tie, add three nodes on the top and bottom and move them up and down like I'm doing here. And add a line like this with the pen tool. Now to finish the bow tie, make this shape with the pen tool. Smooth these two nodes and adjust the shape. Duplicate it to the other side with Ctrl D. You'll need to flip it with the H key. Adjust it so they won't look exactly the same. And to finish the clothing, 
add the line straight down. Don't forget that the bottom is folded, so the line will have to bend to follow. Add another one and adjust the location. Now with the ellipse tool, draw an ellipse. Give it this color, I will end up changing the color later on. Duplicate it down. And this is optional, but I like to make all buttons slightly different so using the object tool, scale and rotate them a bit. The legs are quite simple. They are fine as they are, but we do need to smooth them a bit. So using the technique of dragging the handles out of the nodes, smooth a bit the corners and make the bottom edge curve down. Sample the white color and adjust the shape if needed. Repeat the same steps with the other leg. Now for the shoes, we can use the rectangles that we put for the proportions with the node tool, add a node by double clicking and pull it up. Shift drag from the nodes to make them rounder and adjust the shape so it looks like mine. When you're satisfied with the form, give it a full black. You can duplicate the shoe to the other side and then flip it, though I would recommend you to make some small modifications to the shape so it won't look like a clone. Now for the arms. Give it the white color, curve both sides with the node tool and more importantly, curve the right side. We want to show the sleeves. Now grab the ellipse tool and make an ellipse so it fits with the sleeve. Give it this color. For the other side, you can select these two shapes and duplicate them with Ctrl D. Don't forget to flip them with H. The other arm should not be an exact mirror of the other side, so change a bit the curvature and location and maybe size, but be very subtle. You don't want an arm bigger than the other. Ok, now comes the most complicated part of the drawing, though it's not that hard, I promise. We're gonna make the hands. For the right hand, the one that's holding the cleaver, start by making a rectangle. For the thumb, draw this open rectangle. The other fingers are also rectangles. You can duplicate them. 
place them overlapping each other and slightly rotated. Give it the color of the skin and adjust the order of the fingers. Now it's time to round everything off using the handle drag technique again. Draw the handle of the cleaver. Notice how it has a trapezoidal shape with the bottom wider. Send it below the fingers in the stack order. Curve the bottom and top edge a bit. Now move the hand into position. Use the base to guide you for the size and location. Put it behind the arm shape, but above the sleeve shape in the stack order. Now let's draw the blade. With the pen tool draw the shape of the blade using straight lines. Use the base as a guide. Again, going for our trusty technique of pulling the handles using shift, Round off the bottom corner. Then round off all the other sides. For the color we're gonna stay to the palette. The default palette has a ton of colors, not just the ones that show here. There are more if you click on the arrows at the side. Find the blue list of colors and pick this color. Some very quick adjustments to the hand. And now for the edge, just draw a shape with the pen tool. Duplicate the blade, shift select the edge, left click, set clip. Give it this blue. The other hand is easier. Draw a rectangle and give it the color of the skin. Now draw these shapes. These are the fingers. Draw four of them and place them like this. Give them the color of the skin and adjust the order so the ones in front are above. Let's round off the fingers using the handle drag technique. Put the hand into position and smooth the left corner of the big rectangle. Let's give our chef something to chop. Grab the ellipse tool and make a circle. Here I'm drawing directly on the hand to measure the size. Sample the red color from the scarf thing. Now we want to make this circle look like a tomato. To do that we're gonna need to modify it. 
because this is a built-in shape, we're gonna have to first transform it to a pure path. Select the circle and go to Path, Object to Path. Now you should see the nodes. With the node tool, move the four nodes a bit so it looks more like an organic shape. Now the final thing we need to make it look like a tomato is a stem. So with the pen tool, draw this trapezoidal shape. And with the node tool, bend it a bit. Give it this green. Now for the other part, draw this shape using straight lines. When you're done, round them off a bit so they look less straight. Finally, place the tomato on the chef hand. And as a final detail, Let's show some evidence that our chef has used his cleaver, hopefully on tomatoes. With the pen tool, draw these shapes on the cleaver using straight lines. And then you smooth them with the shift technique. Adjust the shapes so it looks like a fluid dripping. For the splat in the face, just draw an uneven 4 point star. Then you select every node with the node tool and hit the smooth node button. Then adjust by dragging the nodes. And as a very final detail, Repeat the same steps to make a splat on the floor. Make a 5 point uneven star, smooth all the nodes and adjust. But this time, when you're done, scale it from the top to put it into perspective. Keep adjusting if you need. And now that we are basically done with the drawing, it's time to make some final adjustments and refinements before moving on to the rendering section. Basically, you want to look at the whole drawing and see if there is something you don't like and if there is, you go in and fix it. Small things like some shapes that don't convince you, or some small proportions that need to be fixed, or maybe some last minute adjustments to the color. I cannot guide you through this section because I can't possibly know where are these small problems in your version or what you personally don't like. So this part is up to you. What I can tell you is that if you look at your drawing long enough, you should see a ton of these mini flaws. And the more you fix them, the more satisfied with your drawing you'll be. I can also tell you a couple of big changes I made in this drawing. Probably the single biggest one is the left eyebrow. I thought that pushing it down would make the expression look even crazier. And to me it was a huge improvement. I also changed a bit the curvature on the left side of the body. The rest was just some small adjustments, making some things slightly bigger or smaller, or some subtle location or scale changes. Again, very small things. Often happens, I still feel like there is a million flaws and mistakes left in there. But sometimes you have to say that's good enough and move on, so let's do that now. And here we are at the final stage. Now let's add some shadows and outline. This is what's gonna give it that feeling of finish to the entire composition. Making the shadow is easy if you remember from where the light comes from. In this case, I think the light could come from the right side and from the top. That means that all shadow we're gonna make is gonna be on the left side. The way that we're gonna make them is by simply drawing a black shape on top of everything and then giving those shapes low opacity. 
that is one of the fastest and most effective way to draw shadows. So grab the pen tool and draw a shape that covers the entire left side of the character. You'll have to use your imagination to make it react to the bumps and valleys. Pay attention to the way the shadow goes in my drawing if you need, pause the video or slow it. When you reach the bottom, you need to go back up. Keep as close to the silhouette as possible, so the shadow won't leave the character. Because the lines are full black, the low opacity of the shadow won't affect its color. Give the shape a full black color. Now we need to lower the opacity. To do that, let's open the Fill and Stroke dialog. Go to Object, Fill and Stroke. With the shadow shape selected, go to the Alpha slider and lower it to about 20. And of course, remove the stroke. For the shadow in the tomato, use the pen tool, but here comes the interesting part. Constantly going in and selecting the correct fill color and alpha quantity is annoying. There is a nice little feature of the program where you can copy the color of the fill and stroke, including the alpha, and then quickly apply it to some other shape. Select the shadow shape with the color and hit Ctrl C to copy it. Now select the shadow shape of the tomato and hit Ctrl Shift B. This will paste the fill and stroke information into the shape without changing the shape of the path, which is great to quickly apply the exact same color values of a shadow. From now on, I'll be pasting the style to all other shadows. Anyway, making shadows is a fairly repetitive process. I think you get the concept. So instead, I'll time lapse this section from now on and if you want, you can slow the video down with the YouTube features. Just keep in mind that I'm pasting the style of the shadow as soon as I finish a shape. Other than that, it's just a matter of eyeballing where you think a shadow should go. If there is a bumpy surface, then a shadow is probably gonna go at the left side, and if there is something like clothing or anything that makes an overhang, a contact shadow should probably go right below. Once you realize that those are the only two areas where shadows go, everything becomes much easier. And we are basically done with the drawing. But there is one thing. I am of the opinion that for this style of flat cartoons, it always looks better when you make a nice and thick outline. So let's do that super quickly. We're going to use the bucket tool. Select the bucket tool. So zoom right in. And also the character fits the entire screen. Make sure in the tool controls, this dropdown is set to alpha. And here the threshold value of 10 worked for me. Make sure your drawing is set against the background and not a fill object. And click on it. A new shape should be created that fits more or less exactly the silhouette of the illustration. Send it to the back. Now we need to make it grow to make the outline. With the shape selected, go to Path, Dynamic Offset. Now the Dynamic Offset effect is applied. You need to switch to the Node tool to see it. If it was successful, you should see this single diamond that will control how much offset you apply to the shape. Drag it out so your illustration has a nice and thick outline. A thing to keep in mind when following this technique is that the bucket tool tends to generate messy shapes and that often won't work well with the dynamic offset effect. 
The way to mitigate this problem is to avoid offsetting the shape too much, and in the worst case scenario, something like what happened here on top will happen to you. This bumpy shape probably happened because of some rogue node that we didn't notice. Sadly, the only way to fix this is to go in manually. So with the outline shape selected, I will go to Path, Object to Path. This will apply the effect and give me the nodes back so I can fix the shape. Now with the node tool, I'm gonna go in and make the outline nice and smooth again. I wanted to take this opportunity to show you how to fix these sort of problems because they are quite common when using this method to create outlines. And now we are truly done with the character. If you followed along, then congratulations. I hope you learned a couple of tools and techniques related to making characters in Inkshape. If you haven't subscribed yet, I would recommend you to do it now. I plan to keep releasing this type of real-time step-by-step tutorials at least weekly. Also, I would highly appreciate your feedback, so let me know if you liked it or not, and maybe what thing you'd like I do next. Well, that was it for now. See you next video. Bye.